With all the deplatforming that's currently happening on various platforms across the internet of controversial figures, I think it's time we take a look at some blockchain alternatives to video distribution. And the first of these new platforms I want to take a look at today is Flixo. The fight taking place on the internet between those who believe that they should be able to say whatever they want to say on people's platforms and those who think that speech should be curated or censored in order to protect people's feelings or to create a say more harmonious society has shown me that we need to have alternative platforms in order to speak our minds as free people on the internet. YouTube, uh, Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, they're all governed by a group of people who believe a certain set of ideas that believe that those ideas need to be embraced and uh, enforced on their platform. Now this leads to a dramatic curb of speech, albeit speech that is unpleasant and hurtful and hateful, but it is speech nonetheless. Irrespective of whether or not you disagree or agree with the people that are being deplatformed, I think it's safe to say that it's important that we have a plethora of distribution platforms for the different kinds of people that exist on the internet. The more rules that are imposed upon the speech of people and the media they produce creates a high degree of homogeneity, and I think that that is really bad for uh, the ability to communicate well with each other and explore comp uh, complex ideas and to resolve very complex problems. Uh, it also makes for a very boring environment. If, if everyone thinks and says the same thing, then I just don't think that's very interesting. So we need competition. Because we live in a world where people who express controversial ideas are being deplatformed and erased from the internet, uh, we need to find new solutions to distribute ideas free from arbitrary control. I want to talk about the various blockchain distributed video platforms that are popping up, and there are quite a few. And I wanted to start today with Flixo. Flixo is pretty new. It's a very small platform. They have a nice piece of software that they've developed to interface with their blockchain. Uh, their blockchain runs on Ethereum. And the token that they produce is the Flix token with F-L-I-X-X -X, uh, as its spelling. And this token, because it's on the Ethereum blockchain, is able to manage smart contracts. So the way that it works is you get a series of Flix tokens. Say you want to watch a movie for one Flix token. The Ethereum blockchain handles the contract, the I promise to pay you one of these Flix tokens in order to watch the video. So it's like going to the movies. There's a person who's selling you a ticket, except that ticket... Uh, that transaction for that ticket is handled by the Ethereum blockchain. Instead of spending the dollar for the ticket to go see the movie, I click a button and that one token uh, then is sent to the artist and the Ethereum blockchain handles that transaction. No ticket taker necessary. Boom, you get to watch your movie. That's pretty cool. All the video platforms that run on the blockchain essentially operate like this. Uh, the idea behind the blockchain is to disintermediate the people from the thing, right? So if I want to buy something or if I want to send somebody money, I don't need a bank to do it. I don't need a ticket taker to do it. I can remove the bank and I can remove the ticket taker and then I have a much more efficient transaction. So that's what's great about the blockchain. I like how the token is tied to the success of the company. If the platform fails, then the token won't be worth anything. Right now it's at two cents. But if, for whatever, for whatever reason, the token becomes very popular or the platform becomes really huge, what you're going to have is that token rising in value. That's cool. I think that's great. If the platform d succeeds, we all stand to benefit from investing in the platform as well as the creators and investors. If it fails, well, that token is going to be worth diddly squat. That's something to keep in mind when you are trying to find what alternative platform you're going to use to distribute your video. Some of the things that I'm looking at when I look at this piece of software are first, it's graphical user interface, it's security, it's ethos, it's terms of service, how it's monetized, it's data privacy, and whether or not it's just, you know, a fun platform to use. First, let's talk about its interface. When you load into Flixo, the first thing that you see is this uh, nice, clean interface. This kind of reminds me of Netflix, really. This whole platform kind of looks 
a hell of a lot like Netflix. Now the videos are stored on a torrent system. They're not actually stored, as far as I can tell, they're not stored on any Flix servers or Flixo servers. They're stored partially in your browser on your system. So when someone else loads that video, your system is being used to feed the other consumer's video. It's just like how BitChute works. It works and it works well as far as serving the video. I haven't encountered any problems yet, although I haven't watched a lot. Security is pretty bad. I think. There's no two-factor authentication. The password is not zero knowledge, so the uh, the company conceivably could know your password. It's There's no promise that the company doesn't have your password, and that's really important because if they control the password or if they can see your password or change your password for you, that means you don't have control over your funds. That presents a huge liability, a huge security concern. I mean, we, we really have to treat these things like banks. The only person that gets to know the account number is you and the bank. Now we have to trust that bank, that they're not gonna do anything malicious with your money or take it or not let you have it. Because Flixo is also a bank, technically, right? I earn cryptocurrency that I get to keep on there. I have my password that lets me access it, but also I can, I can reset my password quite easily, just like any other old website, but that's not good enough when it comes to cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is routinely stolen because people are bad at keeping track of their passwords, bad at keeping track of their keys, and it's really gonna require a change in mindset uh, when it comes to treating uh, the internet like, like it probably should be treated with a lot more respect towards privacy. This is just a big fail on Flixo's part. They should not have access to the password. The password should be probably unrecoverable. They should leave it in the hands of the user to maintain their keys and their passwords. Otherwise, it's just too much of a security risk to allow Flixo to control not only the platform, but also all the money and also the security, which is pretty lackluster uh, when it comes to securing your funds and your account. I looked through the terms of service. They are extremely vague. I, I mean, look at this. Look at this terms of service. It is so vague. Flixo may, by itself or third parties, including other Flixo members, machine or human review the videos and other content in the Flixo platform to verify that A, they do not contravene any applicable laws, fine, and B, they meet Flixo's content quality and technical policies and requirements. None of those things are stated in these terms of service. They are not stated in the white paper. Can't find anything about what is allowed or what is disallowed on the platform. What does it mean by content quality and technical policies? Is it under 1080 is not allowed? Is it up to 4K that's allowed as far as technical stuff? Does it have to be a particular frame rate? What, what is accepted? None of those things are spelled out. And what do they mean by content quality? Uh, they do they mean the quality of the speech contained therein? What do they mean by that? It's extremely vague. Videos and other contents in Flixos platforms not complying with the laws of meeting Flixos policies and requirements could be deleted. Again, we have no idea what that means. So you could upload something and then voila, it's deleted, but there's no understanding as to what you're allowed and not allowed to do. And because they control the keys to your account, because they are the owners of the blockchain uh, and they can reset the password, you could lose everything. All your money that you've earned on the platform, all the reputation that you've gained could be gone. So it's no different than Patreon in this regard. Now it is a private platform. They can do what they want with that platform. However, if you're going to do that, you need to spell it out very clearly. Otherwise, what's going to happen is as Flixo grows, we are going to discover later that we might, that, you know, that their terms of service are probably a lot more aligned with the likes of Patreon. And we see what debacle that's created. Flixo, I believe, is based in Gibraltar. And Europe has a lot of laws on what can and can't be said online. I can't possibly give a pass to Flixo based on this alone. Their terms of service are extremely vague. They don't define anything. You could be deleted at any time. Your password is essentially meaningless when it comes to uh, the funds in your account, considering they can reset that password whenever they want. There's no two-factor authentication. So even if we can trust Flixo, if there is some kind of phishing attack, uh, you have one less layer of security between you and the thief trying to take your funds. These problems make Flixo a dead platform on arrival. I, I hate to be so harsh about uh, a service I've hardly used because it's got a really nice interface. They've essentially copied Netflix and Netflix is great. So hats off to the design team there of really going with what works. Uh, but as far as security goes and as far as as a creator, can I trust the platform? The answer is simply no. I can't trust a platform that does not lay out explicitly what I can and cannot do on it. 
Um, I, I can't seem to find it. So if if you know Flixo, if you know better or you know something that I that I don't, or, or if you're coming up with a clear set of terms of service, please let me know, and I'll be happy to amend this video. Monetization. Another thing I don't like about Flixo is the fact that advertisers are in bed with Flixo. Even though it's kind of neat that I can agree to watch an ad and then get paid for that in uh, Flix tokens, we've seen the deleterious effects of advertisers on the YouTube platform. We've seen how that they get in between the creator and the consumer. We've seen YouTube change into a platform that is really kind of very boring and milk toasty. If you look at the last YouTube Rewind, they're all highly commercial, highly polished, highly inoffensive uh, pieces of content, almost nothing derived from the users on the platform itself, which is how YouTube Rewind used to work. And this is all an effect uh, from not only uh, ideological influence coming from the outside and within these platforms, but also advertisers. So I don't like that about a Flixo. I don't think Flixo should be uh, beholden to advertisers. I think that creates a serious problem for a lot of creators. Data privacy. If you look at their terms of service, data collection and advertising. Flixo may collect and share with third parties, Flixo members, activities and usage, information to improve the platform's functionalities. That's great. And advertise and offer goods and services in accordance and subject to the limits of any applicable laws. We've seen time and time again that people and companies are terrible at managing the secrets of data. We have Facebook betraying its users' trust on numerous occasions with advertisers and uh, analytic firms. We have Facebook essentially selling access to private messages between users to companies like Netflix. As far as I'm concerned, that data collection and advertising policy should say something like, we will collect data for the use in maintaining the platform's functionalities and improving them, but your data will remain private, period. I don't know why we should trust any more companies with any more data uh, when there's been such breaches of trust in the last, God, only a year or two. I think that this essentially puts Flixo on par with Facebook and YouTube and these other ad-based platforms, and it's just not different. It's not a change in direction that I want to see. I want to see these companies protecting our data and treating us like customers instead of treating us like product. I think that's the biggest problem I see between on Twitter and on Facebook is that we are the product. It isn't the ads that are the product, it's us. It's, it's our capacity to be fed ads to. That perverts the relationship between a consumer and a producer. I think that moving forward, these kinds of communication platforms should really take a stand on keeping their users' data secret and to only release it, and to only use it to, to maintain the platform and to release it to authorities when, it's, when justice is required. These companies just can't be trusted. They, just suck at keeping your information private. Those are the basic things I think about Flixo. I think it's a nice try. I like the name, I like the branding. I like the colors, I like how it's easy to look at. I like the design, I like that it runs. I like that it uses BitTorrent technology. I think that's gonna be one very popular way of distributing media in the future. I think their terms of service are shit. I think that the security is shit. I don't think that you should use Flixo. It needs to keep its user data more private and only use it to manage the network. It needs to define its terms of service explicitly. We need explicit instructions on what is allowed and what is disallowed. I think that moderation should come from the community. I don't think that we should have a secret team of people in a dark room deciding what is okay and not okay to say on these platforms. I think that they need to be moderated via the user. That's how Steam operates. Uh, it's not perfect, but I prefer that to, I don't know, smoke-filled rooms and you know, plotting as to what's actually going to be said and not said. That could change at, at any second because the terms of service are so vague. I think it needs two-factor authentication. I think that the password should be unknowable to the company. Whether or not they can delete an account is one thing, but the, the keys and password should only be in the hands of the user themselves. Otherwise, your money can just be gone. Someone can just take it, including Flixo. It's really disappointing as a platform. Not a lot of security. Um, despite the fact that it works, it's in bed with advertisers. Something that we've seen that's caused a lot of trouble in the past. It collects and shares your data with other parties. I don't think that's a viable way of going forward. People need to take control of their cryptographic money. They need to take control of their passwords. We can't trust a single company to manage both the content that we're trying to serve to our customers and our bank accounts because it requires too much trust. But you tell me, what do you think of Flixo? Do you like it? Are these security issues a problem for you like they are for me? Also, let me know what you want me to review next. I was thinking BitChute, but there's also Steam, and there's also Library, so I'm very curious as to what you think um, I should review next. All right, I'll keep the conversation going down below. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, click that subscribe button, 
find me on Steam, and sign up for my PayPal subscription. It's only $1 a month. It's like my version of Patreon, except it's simpler and way cheaper. You get access to my private Telegram channel, early access to all my work, live streams, exclusive content, and finally, you get what you really came here for, access to moi. See you there.